done but uh, one concept that you guys should know is the reservation wage okay so what reservation wage is uh, it's the amount of salary that if you don't okay now let, let me find a better way of phrasing this it's the minimum salary you need or the minimum wage that you need to work so let me give you guys an example let me talk about my own life so i've spent four years getting a degree from north south then i worked professionally consulting for almost five years during this five years of work i also got a master's degree from north south then i went abroad i went to canada and i got a second master's degree so you see i've done a lot of things to arrive at the point where i am in my life now if i apply for a job and they offer me let's say ten thousand taka that is below my reservation wage which means i would rather not work and earn nothing than work full time for 10,000. I won't even work for 20,000, let's say for an example. If someone told me that you have to work for us full time, that is at least 40 hours a week, and we're going to pay you 20,000 taka per month, I'm not going to take the job. I'd rather be unemployed and earning nothing. So that is the reservation wage. So this, this is not a fixed number. This differs from person to person. And even for one person, this differs from time to time. Over time, reservation wage tends to increase. Five years ago, my reservation wage was much lower than it is today. And hopefully, five years later, my reservation wage will be much higher than it is today. Uh, but it, it changes around. But in a matter of, in a way of definition, reservation wage is the minimum wage a worker needs to work if you offer the worker less than his reservation wage he'll just decide not to work so of course it should be obvious from here that whatever salary that you're earning must be more than your reservation wage it's usually more it's not exactly your reservation level because no one really knows when you think about it, what your reservation wage is. It, and there, is, there, there are other issues, other concerns. We are coming to them later. But it's usually higher. And even if you think of what you've learned in microeconomics, Eco 101, uh, there was consumer surplus and producer surplus, which effectively told you that whenever a transaction takes place in most cases both the buyers and sellers gain buyers pay a price less than what they're willing to pay sellers earn an income a receive a price which is higher than the minimum that they're ex willing to accept and the same thing happens when you negotiate your wage with a firm is that you end up earning uh, salary which is higher than the minimum you're willing to accept and the firms end up paying you a salary which is uh, less than the maximum that they're willing to pay you if you want to I would encourage you guys to try and draw this out in a diagram and figure it out on your own I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is after reservation wage I'm going to move on to something called the efficiency wage efficiency wage is let me just write down the definition first uh, any part of the wage that is higher than the it's making a lot of mistakes today and the reservation level okay what does that mean suppose my reservation wage is uh, i don't know 
30,000, let's say. Uh, so that means if I'm offered 2,000, uh, 29,000, I'm not going to do the job. It's not enough. I'd rather stay home, relax, sleep, read books, whatever. I'm not willing to work full time for such a low salary. But suppose 30,000 is my reservation wage. And if you're willing to pay me 30,000, I'll come and work for you. Uh, but suppose I'm earning 40,000. So let's write this down. My reservation wage is 30,000. My wage is 40,000. So the efficiency wage that I'm earning is 10,000. I'm earning 10,000 more that I'm more than the minimum wage that I'm willing to work at. And why might that be? So firms pay you an efficiency wage for two reasons. Primarily, they don't really know what your reservation wage is. They don't want to take the risk of offering you too low a money and risk losing you. If they offer me 20,000, I'm just going to walk out. They don't want to risk that. So they'll offer me a bit more. They, they just, you know, they want to be safe and not risk losing. That is one reason. That is not the most important reason. The most important reason is that the higher the salary you earn from a job, the idea is that the more motivated you will be to do well in that job. You don't want to lose the job. You don't want to displease your boss. You're very happy with the, with the salary package that you're earning and you, you work harder. So uh, if, you think of, if you think of the tech industry, for example, Silicon Valley, they pay their programmers a lot of money. Why do they do that? Because they want to keep their workers motivated, want to keep their workers happy. So they pay you a very high efficiency wage. The term efficiency is there because the idea is that the higher your wage is, the higher your efficiency will be. Notice that you're the same person. Higher wage isn't making you more talented or more educated. It's just that you work harder. You're more dedicated to your work. And that's why firms will pay you an efficiency wage.